Nootropics. The first strategy you can use to increase your brain power is to use nootropics. Nootropics are smart drugs, which in turn describe both supplements and medications. Generally, anything that can enhance your mental performance in any given capacity can be considered a nootropic. That means that technically something like caffeine it could be considered a nootropic because it makes us more focused, because it prevents us from needing to sleep, and because it helps us to memorize things. But more often, the term is used to describe slightly more exotic and unusual substances. These include modafinil, for instance. Modafinil is a drug that was developed as a treatment for narcolepsy, and the idea was that it would be able to help people who use it to stop falling asleep without warning. Since then, modafinil has proven highly effective at helping people who don't have narcolepsy. Not only can it almost eradicate tiredness completely, and not only can it enhance focus, but it also boosts memory and potentially reaction time. Word has it that 99% of CEOs in Silicon Valley are now using monophenol to get ahead. The term can also be used to describe the likes of L-theanine. L-theanine is a xanthine like caffeine that is a stimulant but has a much gentler effect than caffeine. Think of this as caffeine without the jitters. Many people consume L-theanine and caffeine together, and the result is greater wakefulness and concentration, but without anxiety, headaches, or shaking. Another highly popular nootropic is paracetam. This increases a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, which is an excitatory neurotransmitter that seems to play an important role in focus, memory, and attention. People who use paracetam say they experience music and colors more vividly. They are wittier and quicker in conversation and they remember details more accurately. Of course, there are also plenty of stimulants such as Ritalin and Adderall, which are highly popular these days with students and others who are studying. At the other end of the spectrum are the likes of 5-HTP. This stands for 5-hydroxytryptophan, which is converted by the body into tryptophan and then into serotonin. This improves the mood and improves stress, which many people find makes them more productive and better at working, while at the same time, making them happier and more social. Most people who use nootropics don't pick just one of these supplements either, but rather use a selection of them in conjunction in order to get the precise results they're looking for. And many will work well in conjunction. For instance, if you use paracetam, then it is often recommended that you also take a form of choline, seeing as the brain uses choline in order to formulate acetylcholine. It's confusing, and there's an awful lot to learn if you want to jump in. But there is a large and active community out there to help if you decide you want to learn more. Do nootropics work? But should you learn more? Do nootropics work like the film Limitless? If you can take some supplements like these and become smarter, more focused, more productive and all that, well then the question is, why wouldn't you? Of course, as with all these things, the reality is not quite so simple as a pitch. The problem with all the nootropics I've just described, you see, is that they tend to favor specific neurotransmitters over others. And that's, unfortunately, a drastic oversimplification of how this works. For instance, when you use something like monophenol, you are increasing the neurotransmitter called orexin. This is linked with our wake sleep cycle, and thus it helps you to stay awake longer and to stay productive longer. But unfortunately, our wake sleep cycle is also closely linked with various other cycles and biological rhythms in our body. Specifically, It is linked with our appetite, our bowel movements, and more. So, when you change your orexin, you can actually lose your appetite and end up going to the toilet. Rather, a lot. Likewise, if you use 5-HTP to increase serotonin, you also end up affecting your appetite. And seeing as serotonin is converted eventually into melatonin, the sleep hormone, you can actually end up sleepy and groggy too, which is far from an effective way to improve your social skills It just makes you less socially anxious. And when you increase dopamine with something like caffeine or L-tyrosine, caffeine increases dopamine indirectly by reducing adenosine. This can prevent you from sleeping and lead to burnout. It can also indicate to your body that something very important is happening, which in turn can trigger a release of other excitatory neurotransmitters, such as cortisol and such as adrenaline. Your heart can end up racing. You can feel anxious and you can struggle to get to sleep. No neurotransmitter acts in a vacuum. That is to say that you can't pick a single neurotransmitter to alter without expecting this to have profound effect across the brain and on countless other neurotransmitters, brain areas, and hormones as well. And with that in mind, 
it becomes very difficult to recommend these kinds of supplements and medications. What's more is that there is no neurotransmitter that is right for every single situation. You might take something to increase your dopamine, for instance, under the impression that this will then increase your focus and your memory. And this is certainly true. It will do those things. But do you always want to increase your focus and your concentration? What you may not realize is that focus and creativity are somewhat inversely correlated. This is to say that if you increase your focus, you can actually end up decreasing your creativity. Remember that web of neurons in the brain? Well, creativity comes from our ability to explore those different nodes, neurons, and to find novel connections. Creativity really is simply the ability to recombine existing information in interesting ways. You take two ideas or two concepts and you combine them. And then you have a new novel concept. But if you increase your dopamine, you increase your focus on one specific brain area. You become more intensely focused on one concept or one collection of ideas. And in doing so, you lose that ability to make novel connections and to come up with new ideas. Not only this, but you also lose the ability to relax and rest. So that when you finish work and you try to chill in the evening, you will still feel pent up and anxious. That means you can end up feeling less rejuvenated the next day, and thus find it harder to jump back into work. A healthy brain is not a brain that feels wired or highly focused. It is simply one that feels like it normally does, but better. You should have the ability to switch between different brain states and different modes at will. And nootropics such as those we've discussed patently do not help with this. Finally, you need to consider the risk of tolerance and adaptation. This is the risk that your brain can adapt to the change in chemical balance and thereby become dependent on nootropics in order to function normally. How might this happen? Well, a good example is caffeine. When you drink caffeine, you reduce the action of a substance called adenosine. This happens because caffeine molecules are very similar in size and shape to adenosine molecules. As such, they end up getting trapped inside the same receptors and thereby preventing adenosine from being effective. Adenosine is a byproduct that is produced when our cells create energy. This is created throughout the day as we think, as we engage in activity, etc. As an inhibitory neurotransmitter, it eventually starts to reduce activity in the brain, making us feel more and more relaxed and sleepy, until we start to lose concentration and focus. But if you keep drinking caffeine in large doses, then the brain responds by creating more adenosine receptors. It assumes that you have a chemical imbalance and responds in kind. Therefore, you now find that you feel more tired and groggier when you aren't drinking caffeine, and you need even more tea or coffee in order to feel alert and awake. This creates addiction, and it is what leads to withdrawal symptoms when you stop getting enough caffeine. In fact, it has even been suggested that what most of us assume is sleep inertia, the tiredness we feel first thing in the morning, might in fact be simple caffeine withdrawal. So why should you use nootropics? It's not a definite no seeing as you can actually benefit from being highly focused under the right circumstances. Got work that needs finishing very quickly? Then a strong mug of coffee or perhaps a mod of fennel could potentially help. You just need to recognize the shortcomings and act appropriately. Don't use anything like this on a daily basis and make sure that you only use it when absolutely necessary. And while you might protest about the potential side effects and risks, remember that plenty of people use alcohol and nicotine, knowing full well that it is harming them. At least nootropics boost brain power on paper. Caffeine and many others are even protective against dementia and similar examples of age-related cognitive decline. Just make sure you are cautious when you start using nootropics and don't break the law. If you buy supplements or medications from illegal sources, then there is no telling what you may be ingesting. And if you want to get a brain boost from something you eat, well then, there is a better way. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by All Super Info.